Hello, welcome. Don't know if anyone's watching yet. <laughs> um, but my name is Casey Runa, apparently, based on uh, the name in my profile, the name on screen, <laughs> the uh, address of my website and my Instagram handle right there. Um, <clears throat> and I am going to be doing a little well, maybe it's, I don't know if we should quite call it an inking demo. I will be doing some inking. That's what I'm going to be doing. So inking this comics page, um, or two pages, um, just a short story I've been working on um, for a little while about Hooters. <laughs> So I got started just a moment before I went live, um, just inking this first Hooters girl. I was thinking I'm, I was about to refer to her uh, by name, and I was going to actually say that on my Instagram and promoting this. Be, be a little coy or cutesy and uh, refer to... Um, my, my Hooters servers here um, by their names and then I realized I shouldn't do that because uh, this is actually a non-fiction comic at least in the sense that um, I, I went out <laughs> to made the ill-advised decision uh, perhaps to um, go to Hooters um, not for the first time, um, for better or for worse, but the uh, first time as an adult, and certainly by myself, which was kind of a, a weird experience. But um, specifically going to Hooters during uh, the height of, I guess we'll say, the second wave of, of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, in December 2020. Um, so yeah, that was a few months ago I had this idea. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to talk to the women working there and uh, try to s get a sense of what that environment might be like um, in this really weird time. So really I was kind of the idea popped into my mind, like this specific image of, uh, you know, these women who are paid to, um, you know, wear these uh, really, I'm trying to think of the most generous word here. Um, we could say skimpy, it's these, it's this skimpy uniform, um, but then also wearing these masks that cover their face, kind of like compounding the uh, kind of uh, just uh, objectification, I guess we'll say. So I thought that was kind of a weird image. Um, and sure enough, when I looked into it, uh, their website, I did notice that uh, a number of Hooters around the country had in fact reopened. And sure enough, they were promoting um, the grand reopening on the uh, Hooters headquarters website with uh, a lot of promotional photos of, of women wearing masks. <laughs> so I thought, let's check it out. So this is my um, two page comic strip attempting to kind of wrangle um, all of my observations in that, uh, that trip last December. So 
So who is watching? Do I've got have I got anyone? <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Um, if you're tuning in live, please say hello. Keep me company. Be greatly appreciated. Um, you know, usually I feel like when I when I ink. Uh, uh, for better or for worse, uh, that's that's a time where I usually call up old friends and uh, catch up, and I feel like maybe that's uh, I don't know, maybe it's it's maybe good to catch up with people, but maybe that means I'm a bad friend because I'm not. <laughs> I can only really check in when I'm, uh, you know, uh, multitasking with something else. But I think that's a pretty common practice. I think lots of inkers, because it is kind of, uh, I mean, for me, it's kind of dessert in terms of putting together a, um, a comics page. It's just getting to do this thing that's, um, it's not exactly mindless. Uh, so obviously there's a, there's an art to it. There's a craft to it. Um, you aren't just uh, tracing your lines to uh, and forgive me for quoting a Kevin Smith movie. Um, you're not just tracing when you're inking, but you're you're trying to uh, add a little volume. Uh, think about the way that things like line weight. Um, spot blacks the way that these things can kind of create clarity in terms of uh, especially in comics just like readability um, like being able to understand the, the movement of a character kind of the focal points of one panel composition to the next um, but anyway um, so not mindless, but but something where personally I think uh, it's a little easier for me to at least have uh, I don't know a sitcom on in the background while I'm working or um, some like lyric driven music. Um, when I'm penciling, sometimes I can't even really listen to, you know, like pop music with, with lyrics because it's can be kind of distracting. Um, but this is the time where I kind of throw in a podcast or, uh, sex in the city <laughs> taking back into, um, lately. Um, Or call a friend or go live on, on YouTube. So here we are. So if anyone watching wants to uh, simulate um, my talking to uh, any number of my friends that I owe a call to. <laughs> Please chime in. Maybe some of you are watching. Maybe that's the uh, that's all I the people who I can expect so to watch <laughs> to watch anything I, I put up here. So speaking of uh, sitcoms or TV shows, um, the idea for this comic
was really inspired by um, watching a lot of uh, Julie Klausner's uh, Difficult People show on Hulu uh, in sort of the, the uh, onset of the during the early onset of the pandemic it was kind of a really comforting show I think it's extremely funny characters are sufficiently uh, angry <laughs> so it's kind of it was a good thing to to watch in that state of mind uh, but anyway I was watching um, I think it's season three I can remember I can never remember how many seasons there were because um, my, my recollection is that it got cancelled well before its time which certainly um, I think holds true but uh, I think I was surprised when I rewatched it this go around that there were more seasons than I actually thought so maybe it's maybe even four seasons but certainly three um, anyway doesn't matter um, Billy Eichner's character uh, in this one episode is dragged to essentially what is the, the show's knockoff version of uh, Hooters um, in a particular episode and uh, it was late enough in the pandemic that I was kind of like things were at least where I live um in Rhode Island, I think our numbers, uh, infection-wise, were, were better than a lot of, uh, we were doing better than a lot of, uh, states around the U.S., and, um, I kind of started to wonder, I was like, well, things are reopening, would Hooters be open right now? And that's kind of what kind of sent me on this, this whole, uh, I don't know, just prompt I gave myself, I guess. Um, but I've been wanting to do something like this for a while in terms of, uh, kind of like non-fiction comics, which is a term that I, I think is kind of, uh, I don't know, misleading in a way. <laughs> I think there's something inherently, I don't know, with comics that's so obviously constructed, right? Cause it's, you know, it's all drawing. So even, you know, we kind of take for granted um, maybe because written language is so integral to communication in the, in the modern era we kind of uh, find writing to automatically almost have this ability to be have a lot of uh, journalistic integrity or, or be a little bit more documentarian and then film of course you know, is kind of misleadingly uh, capturing "quote unquote" real life. So I feel like that's a medium where there's a little bit more of an expectation that you can do something nonfiction in that documentary format. Um, I think increasingly more and more nowadays, people are beginning to understand that that uh, you know isn't always the case. That uh, even, you know, the most uh, kind of journalistic documentary feature is taking some liberties or at least, uh, you know, constructing something. But with comics, I don't know, when you're, when you're just looking at drawings on a page, it's, you know, you're obviously seeing it through someone's filter. Which I think is really interesting. Um, it's kind of a, a conflict that I think is compelling because I think comics are very effective. It's a very effective communication medium. And uh, I think like the idea of using them for nonfiction is something that, uh, I don't know, hasn't, I mean, it's certainly been, it's certainly a thing, but I don't know if it's as common as it maybe should be, given the fact that, I mean, you use essentially comics for, you know, instruction manuals, like that's basically what those are. Um, so thinking about 
I don't know, like more essay, uh, essay like com uh, comics, like uh, Ronald Wimberly has that uh, that uh, comic uh, lighten up that um, seems to always be recircling online from time to time. Um, And that's, I think, a really good example of something that's using the visual medium of comics in a way that is essentially nonfiction, essentially, you know, a persuasive uh, kind of essay. Um, but anyway, uh, in the past, a lot of my comics have been autobiographical, which you can, you know, of course, is um, you know, memoirs, nonfiction in a sense, but I think with comics, I mean, the, I think that's a pretty popular field. Um, you know, blankets had a huge impact on my interest in doing stuff. Uh, the kind of seminal Craig Thompson, uh, coming of age graphic novel. Um, using that term graphic novel, course uh, pretty flexibly here because obviously a memoir is not a novel oh man I do not like the way I did that line um what was I talking about <laughs> anyway so after doing a lot of nonfiction, I've been kind of pushing myself um, to do more fiction work in terms of kind of long-term projects. But then it also occurred to me recently that it would be nice to do more nonfiction that, you know, looks outside of my own perspective. So this is sort of, I was kind of searching for a an idea like this to kind of give myself a little practice um, using comics uh, or creating comics in a kind of different mode. Um, Inking is probably my favorite part of uh, the process because I think it's the most satisfying to see it kind of come together. It's really sort of the, in some sense, the the uh, the finishing touches. But um, in a way, that's kind of misleading, I guess, because with comics, sort of the um, the finished product is always going to be reproduced in some way. So this really isn't something that, you know, this artwork, the blue line on paper, it's not something that you would see unless you're watching one of these videos. Um, and instead you would see this art either in print or online Definitely be posting this to my Instagram. It's finished. Um, 
but inking is the part for me where it really starts to look like an actual comic, like just getting that contrast of, of the black and white. Um, this comic I'm, I'm actually, I will be coloring, uh, ultimately, but, uh, that's something that's not quite as, as satisfying for me because I feel like it's <laughs> something I'm not quite as adept at, or at least doesn't come naturally to me. Um, what's nice about the, the subject of, of Hooters for this, uh, is that I, um, kind of a color scheme that I'm already kind of built in that I can use, uh, so I'm not as worried or I feel like I won't be overthinking it as much, uh, for this particular comic, um, but we'll see. Oh man, I do not like the way that I inked that. Um, it's almost like accidental feathering right here with this line. Uh, so when I screw up like that, uh, I like to give myself like a little, uh, make a little annotation. Um, so I just put an X there in orange uh, colored pencil to remind myself to clean that up later when I go back in with white gouache and kind of fix some of the mistakes I make, like any smudges, any accidents, um, or just refine some of these lines that I'm not happy with. Um, and the reason why I do that is simply simply so that I don't, I know what exactly to fix, like that I have a plan, I guess, when I go back in um, later. Because I can really get sucked into um, trying to make these lines perfect, kind of refining them with, uh, in a subtractive way with, with my white out. Um, and that's really something that I kind of hate. It's a tendency of mine that I really don't like because it ultimately, if you go back over these lines so much, um, even the way that I'm doing it now, kind of with just the black ink, kind of making a stroke and then repeating it, um, it starts to deaden like the quality of the line a little bit. It's a little less lively, a little bit, uh, a little less uh, exciting, I think. Um, so I try to avoid that sort of thing, but. Um, you know, I'm, uh, kind of anal in that, in that sense and doesn't really do me much good. <laughs> um, so again, make these little notes to myself about what I want to fix so that I don't kind of get sucked in trying to fix absolutely everything. Um, after I've taken a step away from, from the piece. And I really try to, um, if I can, give myself a day to kind of sit on some inks and kind of not look at the, the um, illustration of the comic for a while um, before I go back in and fix it because I'm gonna be more critical about myself, I think, in that moment after uh, immediately after inking then I might be like the next day and so some of these things that I think are issues um, might disappear um, of course, if you're working on a professional illustration job and you have a deadline, that's not always an option. It depends on how things time out.
inking inking black hair is always uh, <laughs> pretty satisfying, I think, just because you get to just sort of use the brush stroke like basically as the object here. So having these kind of, I don't know, tendrils falling in front of her face, um, you know, knocking that out with just one stroke is really satisfying. And, um, again, that's a place where I try to challenge myself to be a little bit more um, offhanded about just blocking that in and kind of, uh, letting the, the energy of the brush stroke be the, the thing, because obviously hair kind of falls in a certain way and uh, you don't want it to look stiff. Um, there was something I remember as an art school student struggling with with like my ink technique was always kind of like outlining uh when someone had black hair like outlining it and then filling it in um and then at some point i realized that it's so much better to kind of i don't know treat each stroke again as you know maybe that's a strand of hair or that's a chunk of hair and kind of fill it in by um work from the inside out uh, when you're doing the hair instead of, uh, you know, outside in. So that those edges that you get on a character's head feel, again, more natural, a little bit more, like, flowing, like, um, like communicating that, that texture of the hair. So here, I'm not going to do that along this edge. Um, just because I want to get this highlight. kind of a minor thing, but just uh, in the reference photos I took, I like the kind of the overhead lighting. Um, get a little bit of a sense of that with the placement of this highlight, but maybe not. Um, the lighting was something I was kind of a little conflicted by when I was penciling this um, just because you know I took I took lots of reference photos of the the Hooters location I was at um, you know with the girls uh, permission of course uh, but, I mean, something you notice, like, in those kind of restaurants is the lighting's really, you know, it's quite, it's quite bad, or, you know, it's good for a restaurant, but it's not good for, you know, it's, it's not very photogenic, so I'm, I'm looking at these photos, um, I have them open on my computer, um, besides my YouTube window, and, um, yeah, the lighting's horrible. <laughs> a lot of the, 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 um, the waitress that I'm, working on right now in that reference photo is uh, backlit pretty severely um, so that was something I was trying to figure out when I was penciling this was how much I want to um, communicate the lighting and how much I want to incorporate that into um, each panel and if that was something I could use in a constructive way for the, the story um, or the narrative or um, I mean that the bottom line is ultimately the lighting in a restaurant like that is pretty general um, but because it's so general, again, it's like if you're not, you know, posing things intentionally, then uh, the shadows are going to fall weird places and some people will be 
lit from behind and kind of uh, things will get washed out in the photograph, which is why relying purely on uh, photo reference can be really tricky and something that I, I try not to do too much. Um, I think if you look at this piece, it's pretty clear that's photo referenced. Um, I hope not woefully so. Um, because I think that the, the problem you get with uh, photo reference, one of the problems is the certain kind of stiffness. And um, something I tried to do with this piece in particular, um, because I did take so many photos, is I was also, when I went to, to Hooters to do my research for this, um, you know, in addition to kind of uh, talking to the women there and um, taking notes on what they were telling me, I was also doing a lot of sketches. Um, so some of these things, um, so down here especially, uh, this pose in this, uh, this is the final panel on the, on the first page of the story, um, this is based purely on a sketch that I did. Um, uh, observational drawing uh, at the restaurant. Um, Whereas something like this was a was a photo that um, my waitress uh, was kind enough to pose for. Um, it's like a very specific type of uh, attention that I don't know that they're quite used to, but I don't know. Um, anyway, I think ultimately what I decided with the lighting here is to just kind of treat it as the kind of general lighting and not, you know, even when, you know, a certain photo would just happen to have kind of harsh lighting um, with lots of shadows to kind of uh, try to minimize that to a large extent just for the sake of like, the clarity of the piece. Um, I always get a little bit, let's say, extra paranoid when I move on to the face because I think it's it's really easy to, especially if the features are small, just misplace them slightly and then everything looks just slightly odd or the expression changes. Um, so that's kind of a high tension <laughs> area for me. Uh, I mean, luckily here, I'm not working from a, a likeness. I think that's something that's, that's really tricky. Um, if you're trying to capture the likeness of someone famous or someone who you're 
audience of the piece uh, will know or recognize, uh, or even honestly, like a, a character that you're trying to, you know, even one you set up in your comic. Um, you know, making sure that that's consistent so that it reads as the same character. Um, you know, that can be kind of stressful, like making sure to get, again, those facial features uh, right. Um, that turned out all right. Now, I guess the question is, did I want her eyebrows to be black? I don't see why not. See, this is kind of stressful too because I want her expression to look relatively blank, it's kind of benign. Um, it's easy with eyebrows, I think. Uh, I don't know, it's like, I think the easiest way to draw eyebrows is to, you know, the easiest way to draw anything is to exaggerate it, I think. And, you know, exaggerate eyebrows is to make them look more severe and then you know, someone can look uh, angry. And that's not what I want here. Um, anyway, I guess to my point about likeness or um, being able to kind of follow a character through a, a sequence, uh, it's like a little tiny a notch I made on the eyebrow I want to fix. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, the pressure of uh, getting these characters to match, I think, or getting these facial expressions right is, of course, uh, <laughs> uh, mitigated slightly by the fact that their faces are, uh, of course, uh, covered up for the most part. Um, I don't like inking shoes, I've realized. Maybe I just don't like drawing feet in any capacity.
Oh, I just realized I'm inking this off screen. Sorry about that. Just getting sucked in. Focused on getting these shoes just right. Funny, I was just reflecting um, earlier this week uh, as I was, I was grading my RISD students. Um, I feel like when I'm critiquing people's work when they're using ink, I'm always saying that I want them to like use more spot blacks, like fill things in black and more areas and kind of utilize that as a, as a tool, like getting that, that contrast and using that as a way to create kind of visual balance on a page. Um, have like a hierarchy, kind of create some uh, focal points. Um, but I realized I don't, I don't, I feel like the, lately I use less and less black in my uh, ink drawings. I think that's maybe, the fact that I tend to color my ink drawings now digitally, um, and it's easier to, um, yeah consider those those options and, and kind of uh, change my mind about things, I guess, <laughs> if I haven't really committed to lots of uh, black shapes. Um, but I don't know, it's interesting how some people can use just line and get, um, I don't know, have a page that does look fairly balanced just in terms of like the line weight and um, creating clarity with, with that. Uh, but I think, especially when you're starting out, it's like a spot black is a really effective tool. Just grab, grab someone's attention. Um, of course, it can be overdone. I guess that's an interesting 
maybe it's not uh, an interesting kind of philosophical question or maybe something, I don't know if any other teachers watch this. Like, do you think that you <laughs> are unconsciously teaching your students to make work that's uh, like yours or that is uh, more like what you wish <laughs> your work looked like? I think a lot of the things that I get excited about um, in my students' work really look like things that are kind of... Uh, design heavy um, kind of sparse if that's done really well that really blows me away and I think maybe that's kind of uh, envy I feel like I'm always over overdoing this stuff in terms of rendering but I also really like rendering So I'm kind of caught in this uh, middle ground. I just want my students to uh, be more committal than me, maybe. <laughs> Am I on camera? Cool. Um, I think these, these shoes are actually turning out fine. I don't know what I was worried about. Shoes are really hard, uh, I think, when you're drawing them from photo reference because there's so much, I don't know, shoes have so much stupid uh, detail in them, you know. Something that always has always bothered me is uh, I don't know, always just wanting like a plain black sneaker that looks as benign as possible. Like, that's my absolute dream. I think that's a joke in Ghost World as well, but um, it's something that I... I don't know, I'm just dying for the most mundane sneaker, and uh, I don't know, they always have all these, like, doodads and all these weird, uh, I don't know, what you'd call, like, the molding of the, <laughs> the plastic or the rubber or whatever sneakers made out of. Um, it's always so specific and kind of, like, I don't know. You know, I have I have friends who work in shoe design or in, in footwear. I should I should ask them because I really feel like shoe design has kind of had the same. I don't know. It's like how cars got kind of slick. I think now with like I don't know. I think those like weird Tesla trucks and things like that that are I don't know. They're not really. I don't have enough of a strong like industrial design language for this but um really they've gotten kind of blockier again but in like a dumb sci-fi way whereas they used to be kind of like just audaciously just goofily like curvy and like i don't know like i don't know it's really organic shapes i wonder if this makes sense to anyone what i'm saying anyway i feel like shoes have just been like that since i don't know the 80s like they just got all goofy and big and they all have like like cushions and like these pseudo organic forms that like shoot out of the you know like the <laughs> the, the soul and like all this nonsense um and i feel like that hasn't really I mean, maybe it's gone out of style but it hasn't gone out of uh like it's still popular these kind of dumb sneakers that i hate so much anyway that's just it's not fun to draw um, I think it's easier to draw from life because you can kind of make sense of it when it's in front of you, but it's hard when it's, uh, from photo reference because it's easy to misunderstand what you're looking at. Like, is that piece of the, like the plastic or the, the rubber sole, or is it a piece of like the fabric on the top? Is that like a wrinkle in the fabric or is it a part of like the, I don't know, the molding of the shoe? Is it a part of the design? I don't know, it's all this, like, I don't know, these, these dumb details. It's really cumbersome. Oh, someone's here. <laughs> uh, hello, Neil. Welcome. 
in my particular about the kind of uh, brush that I use. Um, not, I'm really not. I, the, this brush I have is a uh, Winsor Newton, just a Cotman, which I think is like their cheapest, I don't know, watercolor paintbrush series. Um, I know like a lot of the, uh, a lot of the cartoonists I really admire who work with traditional, you know, ink media use sable hair brushes and, uh, I know I forget. I think it's series seven is the the Windsor Newton sable hair brush that's really popular. And I think the other one's like a what Raphael um, makes a sable hair brush that's uh, pretty, I guess, renowned. Um, but I I don't know. I've never. I do think about investing in a sable hair brush every once in a while, um, or like a fancier brush. But um, I think you have to really commit to cleaning your brushes and like actually dealing with like washing them out and maybe even using uh, the kind of like brush soap that I only had when I was uh, an art student taking uh, oil painting classes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have the patience for it. So I kind of buy these crappy brushes so I don't feel like I'm throwing my money away. But they are kind of like a gamble. I've noticed like I usually, when I buy one of these brushes, I usually get like three or four of them just because sometimes you just bring them home and you once you put ink in it there's something about like the the way the the round tip kind of forms to like a point sometimes it's like there's just like a hair that's like misplaced and it's just sticking out too much and it makes like a weird mark and uh like even if you try to like cut it with a piece of scissors like it's it's going to ruin the entire brush so it's i don't know it's it's all a, a gamble i think i need to um, grow up and then invest in a high quality brush, but not as of yet. Um, this brush is a size three round, which I think I actually bought a while ago just because I couldn't find a size two or maybe the one, the size two that I bought, um, as I mentioned, like turned out to be kind of unusable. Um, I mean, usually I like to work with size two cause it's, you get like a good, variety of, of line weight um, you can get relatively thin but also get thick enough for you know some of these lines down here and her legs uh, you know kind of moving away from the the light source where I'm kind of perceiving it at least um, but yeah I don't know I'm, I'm kind of this I'm liking the way this thicker line looks for this is looking on this figure um, but yeah, it's it's the first time I really noticed how thick, how much thicker the number three brush, like how much how much uh, thicker my lines are since I've been using this. Um, anyway, I I should be more particular about something that's <laughs> essentially, you know, the most important tool <laughs> in this kind of method of of making illustration or, or comics art, you know, it's like these lines are what ultimately everyone's going to see. So I should be making sure those <laughs> brushes are, um, delivering art that I, that I like, but I don't know. Anyway, so that's one figure down. I was hoping to do this figure before we even stream so that I can kind of get some practice in. Um, cause the one that I really wanted to work on, it's kind of like, I mean, for me, like this is like the whole appeal of doing this comic has been just wanting to do this figure. I just think this pose is so um, so good and specific. Um, uh, so yeah, so this is a this is a comic as I've, I've mentioned uh, previously in this video, but um, for Neil and anyone else who's just tuning in, uh, this is a comic about uh, Hooters during. COVID-19 pandemic. So I uh, went to Hooters a, <laughs> a, uh, a few months ago to kind of get a sense of what it was like because I thought it might be an interesting comic. Um, specifically, I was thinking about the, this image of like, um, you know, these Hooters waitresses who have this uniform that's so kind of uh, uh, immodest. <laughs> uh, but then now they're also wearing, you know, 
face masks. So it's such a weird kind of, I don't know, it's almost like if you were uncomfortable with the, the male gaze oriented premise of Hooters before, um, imagine uh, interacting with women in masks, you know, I think we're all kind of dealing with in lots of different contexts uh, throughout this, this pandemic, like, I don't know how hard it is to kind of engage with people and like how, you know, there's lots of things that kind of are alienating us from each other right now. So I thought this was kind of an interesting uh, take on that. Um, do I write my own stories? Um, yes. Uh, Neil says, I'm intimidated by trying to make comics because I feel like I suck at story writing. <laughs> uh, well, Neil, the, I think the thing is, um, you have no idea what Hooters are. Uh, Hooters is a restaurant um, uh, that the gimmick is that all of the way it's the wait staff is uh, 100% female, uh, and they have this uniform, which, as you can see, is uh, you know, short skirts, uh, tight shirt, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's the whole premise. The Hooters, if you can tell by the logo, it's a little bit of a, a joke on, uh, well, on breasts, obviously. Um, the logo kind of uh, tries to use the O's. Very, you know, very highbrow way. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess, I guess uh, Neil, to your, your question, uh, I do write my own stories. Um, I haven't, I don't think I've ever written I've been commissioned to do comics before but I've always I mean in the few times that that's that's happened I've been lucky enough to uh, um, be kind of given free reign in terms of um, I don't know maybe just responding to a prompt but uh, yeah I've, I've, I've written all of the comics that I've done uh, this was the first time I've actually um, so in the story I was interviewing uh, these waitresses and uh, taking notes um, and so all the text here is based on, um, and, and where, I, I, where I could, you know, actually uh, recall it in enough detail, uh, I tried to do it verbatim, but some of it, you know, in order to kind of uh, flow right for the story and also kind of fit into this two-page format that I wanted to do, centering around two different um, women, I had to kind of finesse things a little bit. But it, it's 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 uh, all based on, on writing, or based on um uh, what these women said to me. So um, that was interesting because uh, it's kind of like I'm writing sort of uh, outside of my own voice. Um, but to respond to your point, um, I think, you know, I, I think it's easy to kind of, uh, I think comics are really intimidating. I remember for, for that reason that you're talking about, like coming up with a story, um, and I know like lots of, I don't know, I had friends in art school um, who were more like, wanted to do comics but were more illustration oriented and weren't like confident in their writing or maybe didn't have as much of an interest in coming up with their own stories. And I think that's always been kind of like a tricky thing is like figuring out like how to pair up with a writer and how to do that. Um, because comics is like a weird kind of collaborative medium um, in that, you know, I mean, a lot of, the majority of my favorite cartoonists write their own stuff, but, you know, certainly in like the world of like superhero comics or like more mainstream comics, um, even now, like a lot of the, the image comics that are really popular that don't really fit the superhero genre, um, a lot of those are, you know, written by one person and drawn by another person, but, you know, I think wanting to write comics is uh, kind of uh, I don't know I feel like it that 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 desire attracts a lot of people who aren't really I don't know this is kind of maybe a bad generalization but kind of like not as as disciplined because you know with comics it really is all about the the artwork you know the artwork is in a sense the writing um, because it's all storytelling uh, visually so I think it's easy for people who aspire to 
write comics to kind of uh, exploit artists in a way because I think it's kind of not always a fair trade-off um, in terms of like workload or compensation but also like the writers in generating the idea feel like a, a certain kind of uh, um, I don't know like entitlement to more of the, the creative weight and being able to kind of uh, demand certain things and um anyway i mean my, my my feeling is like if you are if you like comics if you are interested in making comics then you should just try writing your own comics and i think again it's like a matter of just thinking about what like reframing what what, what do you think writing means you know because in the world of comics the the drawing is the writing as i've already said um in my comics class that i teach uh, for adults at, at RISD, um, and in, you know, a lot of the, the comics classes that I took when I was a student, um, the first few assignments were always silent, or, you know, silent's kind of a funny way to put it, but like wordless, like there was no text. Um, and, you know, it, you're still writing in the sense that you were coming up with a story, um, but it can be something really simple, and honestly, like, if you're interested in drawing comics, you should start simple anyway, because they are so much work, and trying to figure out like the the, riv uh, the rhythm of how a comic should function and like there's lots of storytelling mechanics that it, it, it you really have to kind of figure them out through practice and so starting with you know like a one page comic or like a two page comic like what I have here you know it's always good and I think you can write a comic about really anything um, you know it doesn't even necessarily have to be about anything it doesn't necessarily have to have a story it could just be like um an assignment i always give in fact my students this is what i was just uh critiquing this morning um for my online students uh the assignment where i ask them to uh make a comic about their favorite or least favorite place and uh i like that prompt because it doesn't necessarily like inherently suggest a narrative like it could just be about how the the, the place makes you feel and you can think about ways to draw that in a, in a sequence but it doesn't necessarily have to be like you know a specific memory um that you have about that place or like a story you're setting in that environment it could just be about like showing off different aspects of the environment. I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, I mean, Neil, if you are interested in drawing comics, I, I would just say go for it. Um, but of course, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to because it's sort of like <laughs> I'm not going to bully you into it because it's pretty, uh, you know, a lot of pictures to draw. Uh, Neil, where are you watching from? <laughs> cool cool uh yeah go get your schoolwork done oh from the philippines see that might be why you don't know what hooters is um i feel like i don't know if everyone in america knows what hooters is but i think it's you know it's fairly famous I, they did i know for a fact they opened up uh at least one location in the philippines because i uh uh <laughs> doing a little bit of research before i drew this um, anyway, but I forgive you 
<laughs> for not knowing what it is, and I also forgive you for <laughs> leaving to do your schoolwork. I think that's probably a good a good thing to prioritize. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you just give your, yourself a simple prompt, like even, I don't know, like, uh, I tell my students to draw, one of their assignments is, uh, like, draw a comic that illustrates, like, a talent of yours, like, almost like you're trying to teach them with an instruction manual, you know, because that's a good way to kind of think about how to communicate things uh, clearly in a comic. So, you know, something small like that, I think, can be a great exercise and a great way to get started. I got worried I was off camera again. <laughs> um, so this this <laughs> this waitress. You now I knew. Um, I think. Well, now now I'm kind of second guessing how well known anything related to Hooters might be, but uh, I feel like. Well, I th I think. Hula hoops, hula hooping is, is fairly commonly associated with Hooters, but one thing I hadn't seen before when I went, um, <laughs> when I went to, uh, Hooters to do, uh, research for this comic, um, I'd never seen, like, the, this, like, bar stool dance, um, that this waitress was doing, um, so that was something I knew, like, right away I wanted to put in the comic, and that was actually really tricky to piece together, because all I had was um, my sketches from that. Uh, it was something, like, I didn't really get, I couldn't get a, a good photograph of, uh, you know, the waitress was nice enough to, like, <laughs> pose for a second and, and, and do this, but, you know, I already felt kind of like a weird, like a weirdo being a, I don't know, Artie guy in the corner of the Hooters uh, with his sketchbook um, asking questions. So I, I didn't want to like, <laughs> obviously she's also working, so I'm not gonna bully her to take like more than this one uh, photo for me. Um, but yeah, she was nice enough to sit on top of the stool and kind of, you know, pose like she was doing the, the stool dance, but it was, it was like, she really like, she was like rocking herself back and forth and like spinning around. It was like, uh, I don't know, like riding a, a, a bowl or something. It was kind of, uh, pretty ludicrous and uh yeah i just i really wanted to get that image in this in this comic um you know like that's the kind of stuff that i was hoping to find by actually going there and doing this um try to get some really specific images and um so yeah i've just been excited to finally get to ink this after you know, spending so much time on, on just drawing this. I think this was the first, well, no, I think I started with this figure and then jumped to the, this one before I actually drew the rest of the, the comic around these two figures. Um, but yeah, I was excited to draw it to begin with. And then after the fact, excited to ink it, but then I almost had to, it's almost like the rest of the comic was uh, the price I had to pay for <laughs> getting the excuse to finally come back to this and ink it. Um, yeah, that line, I don't know about that line. Something I have to always remind myself when I'm inking though, is sometimes I put down a line and it looks, I don't know, like just in and of itself, it doesn't look very good to me. Like there's just something about like the line width or maybe like the quality of the line that, um, isn't what I was picturing, but I always have to remind myself that sometimes once you, you know, continue inking and kind of flush out the rest of the image around it, it, uh, it doesn't look <laughs> quite so bad anymore in context. It kind of 
bounces out and um, oh see this is what I'm always worried about is getting these smudges um, so that's something uh, you know it, anyone who watches this video from like the beginning um, would have noticed that I'm inking these uh, these pages uh, for the most part from left to right um, and that's because I'm of course right-handed and I uh, try to avoid kind of moving my arm across what I just inked and kind of smudging things like I just did there um, but you know there's always it's always a, a risk that you're running um, you know I think especially once you get like really into the process you kind of just follow you know you kind of just jump at whatever line really like catches your eye um, and you know I rotate my paper a lot as I think you know you more or less have to um, when inking with a brush really I'd say inking with anything I think just drawing in general it's pretty helpful to be able to rotate the page and kind of tackle things from another angle um, I guess the difference of course is you wouldn't really be able to do that or need to do that if you're drawing from observation I think it's kind of I don't know that's interesting I'm kind of that's interesting, as though someone <laughs> just responding to my own thought. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to pay attention next time I do some observational drawing if I do rotate the, the page at all, like if that's an impulse that I even have. Um, but yeah, I think it's when something's like static, like a photo referenced image or, you know, like a pencil underdrawing like this that I'm applying ink over. Um, because it's static, I have that kind of luxury of being able to like move the page around and it feels necessary in order to get kind of the right quality of line and, and certain moments, the right energy. And um, I don't know, sometimes there's like, I guess with the, the curvature of the lines as well, and especially these ones where I want to get, you know, kind of a, a thin point um, and kind of a thicker you know, start with a thin point and then end with a thicker point or vice versa. Like, I think it's much easier, I think, to start with the thin point and then uh, push out into the larger brush mark. Um, so that, you know, depending on what direction the line is, is going in, I have to, that always asks for rotating the page. Um, I'm getting a little more anal about this hair than I would like. Um, hmm. Yeah, this this like corner with her arm and the hair kind of intersecting is kind of a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, I don't know. I guess that looks fine. See, now I'm kind of kicking myself, like looking at this image versus the figure I started with. I feel like this, the line work I'm doing on this one's thinner than the one on the left. That's kind of bothering me. Um, I guess we'll see how these work out. Might have to touch that back up. But I guess I'm starting on the left here, so, um, you know, if my light source is coming from maybe like the left, kind of in front of this figure, it makes sense that some of these lines are a little bit thinner, so we'll see how that 
resolves itself when I get to the thicker lines on the right side of the figure. Um, see if I have to go back in and either, you know, add some line weight to this arm or conversely I might have to like go back into the, the first figure I did and, you know, with uh, some white out and kind of trim the weight off some of those lines, but um, I don't know. Hopefully I won't have to do that. That's sounds like a nightmare. And uh, like maybe not worth doing. <laughs> I feel like I kind of negated um, this work I just did on my hand. I really liked the way those fingers look, and then I put these uh, black shapes behind it, and it doesn't look, you know, I'm losing that outline. Again, I think this gets back to that idea I was saying about earlier where I've been trying to pare down, I think, a little bit with the um, how often I use spot blacks or just, I don't know. It's like you really have to think about the placement of those, um, the way things are going to overlap. Sometimes it's hard to really predict um, until you're actually you know putting down black marks and really get to look at it. I might be kind of um, you know, punishing myself again by uh, inking these figures first. You know, these kind of large um, figures on the, the page layout, uh, of course, are going to be much easier and I think a little bit more fun than inking the smaller figures. Um, so maybe I should just save these until the end, but it's definitely because it's easier. I think it's maybe good to start with these just to get the, the practice in. So when I get to the smaller figures, they're a little bit, um, I don't know, it's easier to get those uh, those lines I want in like a first, uh, with a first quick mark.
Excuse me. <laughs> what you guys can't see is that I'm kind of fiddling with my uh, reference document on uh, on my computer. Um, so yeah, I don't always do this um, exactly this way, but uh, for this piece, I really um, because I had all of this, uh, all these reference photos to work from and also all these sketches that I compiled, like I really wanted to have like a easy kind of survey of, uh, you know, the, the land or I guess, I don't know, my mixing metaphors here. Um, anyway, I went to the, the length of uh, actually doing like a mock-up of both of these pages uh, in Photoshop, kind of actually placing my photo reference combined with um, combined with uh, my, my sketches from on site, um, kind of arranging those in this layout. so that I could really access everything pretty easily. And you know, for some of this stuff, it's like, um, like this is basically just referencing essentially one photo. Um, I guess the, 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 uh, the, the, the one thing that I changed really is, uh, um, simply the, Hooters logo was something that I had to get a little bit more reference for because I ended up flipping this image. So originally, you know, the original photo I took, she's sort of facing to the right as opposed to here. She's sort of, you know, her eyelids kind of coming out towards the left. Um, and it's actually the same thing I did with uh, this figure because I really just, um, I really wanted them to kind of work with uh, the page layout I was going for. So it made sense for you know, the story to start with the character facing towards the right of the page because that's the way, you know, certainly in the Western tradition we read left to right. But then concluding it, I wanted to have this figure, you know, facing the opposite direction. But of course, when I took those photos, uh, as luck would have it, um, both women are kind of facing the, the opposite direction is what I needed for the, the content of the story. So I had to flip those. Um, I think that the Hooters logos were actually the last thing I drew um, in terms of like the penciling stage for this piece because I was kind of procrastinating, like figuring that out. And so kind of like in order to make sure that, you know, the, the lettering like looked convincingly, like not flat, but actually on the, the shirt, like fitted to their body. Um, I had to do some Google image searches and uh, get some <laughs> primarily official <laughs> Hooters uh, promotional images. Uh, and that was something that I was able to kind of, you know, doing some imaginative uh, work kind of combine um, in my head. So I had few different windows open on my computer while I was doing these letters, which seems like such a, it's such a small thing to kind of agonize over. But again, when you see lettering on a shirt, um, in a drawing, you know, if it looks flat, it really, there's something about it that is kind of jarring to me. So I wanted to make sure I got that right. Anyway, so I mean, this was primarily one uh, image that I'm looking at right now, just to give my, uh, Give myself a little bit of a refresher on uh, how the lighting setup looks. Um, how that's kind of defining some of these forms. Uh, but I'm also um, with some of the other figures. It was it was much more complicated in terms of so this panel here took a, a, you know, had to cobble a few things together to kind of uh, 
make this scene look convincing to me. Um, so I had, you know, a photograph um, that I took at the restaurant of one of the uh, Hooters waitresses doing something here in the back. Um, I had lots of photographs of, uh, you know, <laughs> patrons there, but uh, that they, they took without uh, being aware, uh, without their being aware, um, which I didn't quite feel so guilty about. But um, these figures aren't actually, you know, taken from that. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to get a sense of like, I don't know, like uh, what kind of people like patronize this place. Um, so it's kind of like an interesting blend of like, I don't know if there's a nice way to say like townies, <laughs> but also like, you know, kind of like very conservative looking like business guys, like this guy here with the sweater vest and the, the shirt. So I think like the fashion I borrowed from um, people that were actually in the, the photographs, but um, these are actually both my roommate. I had him pose and then I kind of, uh, after the fact, you know, you know, I arranged the, the two images of, of my roommate posing, um, you know, holding up his phone or clapping his hands um, and put those on top of each other in Photoshop, um, put, you know, the other photo of the actual Hooters location in the background here. Um, and this photo is uh, embarrassingly enough, uh, this, this was based off of a photo of, of myself doing <laughs> this action because as I mentioned uh, earlier, I did not have um, uh, like a full library of reference for like this kind of a uh, bar stool dance that this waitress was doing. I really just have this one photograph that um, she allowed me to take. Um, so yeah, that, that some of these panels took much more work to kind of figure out than others. Um, but ultimately I think, you know, that's kind of the ideal, I would say, just because if it was too easy, say if I was just copying like a, a photograph really stiffly in um, every panel, um, it would look stiff. <laughs> it's just um, implied by what I already said. So. Um, anyway, it's just, you know, I think having to actually do some real cartoony work and actually figure out some of these poses and how to um, combine these images and get the poses that I wanted and the compositions that I wanted, like, that's kind of, you know, that's ultimately for the best because it's, at least from my perspective, in that you're, you know, not being, you're not having things dictated by the photographs you have, just you just happen to have arbitrarily, um, whether it's from Google images or even like photographs you took can sometimes be limited. Um, So I'm really uh, avoiding these uh, these legs. <laughs> I think I just I'm I'm kind of disturbed by having to account for the this chair leg in the, the foreground, in front of uh, the waitress's leg. Um, Cause it's really a treat when you get to just ink one long, kind of flowing line like this. Um, but if I have to stop in between, 
I guess I could white it out later, but, you know, it always feels a little bit like cheating. So this line I want to be fairly thick, just because the form is a little bit larger than some of these smaller details, but then also can't be too thick because, again, this is kind of where the light source is coming from. So I think that's a good middle ground. Um, thicker than the, um, oh, see, I'm going back over and kind of messing it up. Um, it's thicker than the, uh, oh, see, now I can't fix it. Ugh. God. I'm a monster. I'm a monster. I bet it's imperceptible <laughs> on screen, but I really don't like the way this line kind of, I don't know, kind of bulges out very slightly. Anyway, this is stupid. I'll probably not notice it later. Um, anyway, uh, so it's thinner, it's thicker than the uh, forearm up here, uh, but still it's going to be uh, thinner than the line that I'm going to put kind of at the bottom of her thigh. just before we end here just try to finish the head at least could be pretty pretty satisfying good place to stop um, See, I don't know if I like that um, line I just put under the neck, so maybe that is a good sign that I should take a break <laughs> if I'm getting self-critical about something pretty benign. Um,
see, this is a good example of a place where I should have rotated the page. That line would be, be a little bit, um, a little bit crisper, I think. More crisp, is crisper the right? Is that grammatically correct? <laughs> Um, so I'm avoiding the Hooters logos for now. Um, I think I'm going to just ink those with a artist pen, um, just to make things a little bit easier. Um, I also think like getting, I know, wanting to differentiate a little bit, uh, between like the what is like real in the comic and what is kind of like a, a print or a sign like uh, we have on the uh, characters shirts I think that it's an impulse I want to follow um, yeah because I, I definitely I think it's more important that like these shadows really pop out and feel like they have form and um, if I give the Hooters logo this kind of like brush line, it'll probably have a little bit too much emphasis. I think it'd be better to have uh, a thinner line or especially, you know, a, a line that has kind of a consistent weight to it. Uh, so it kind of falls back behind the, the shadows, the folds in the, in the fabric. So I do use artist pens for a number of things when I'm inking. Um, and one of the things that I, I usually start with um, that I didn't do this time is to just like outline the, the word balloons um, on the pages. Uh, And I'm not sure if I have a reason for that. I think the reason why I didn't bother doing it with this piece is that I actually don't have that many areas where the um, the word balloons like overlap with anything in the image, like or, you know anything other than like background. So you know I think normally if I had like a section where let's say like this figure's head, maybe if that would overlap with a word balloon, I, I would probably want to get that out of the way so I can kind of see what I'm working with and see how I need the head to line up. But I don't know. Um, it's probably a bad example, I think. You know, if I'm allowing the word balloon to dictate this drawing, I think that's probably a, a bad thing. But um, it's kind of like when you're figure drawing, if you You ch you change the uh, I don't know you ch you change like the whole position of a head just to accommodate an ear you've already drawn rather than you know the body that's connected to the neck or something like that. I don't know if any of my analogies make any sense, especially after inking for an hour and a half kind of talking to myself, I think probably might be getting a little less cogent. So this mask really looks like a like a snake eyes, like the is that what his name is? The like the ninja in G.I. Joe? I like this shadow, it makes it look a little bit too wavy. Huh. Well, I think that's probably fine. Um,
I don't, I didn't watch, uh, the last time I did a video like this, I didn't watch it back, so I'm curious. Yeah, I'm wondering if I make a lot of telling grunts when I'm inking. Yeah, I don't like, see, this is what I was talking about earlier with like these kind of strands of hair. If you get too finicky about them, it's, it starts to look stiff, but it's also I don't know, very tempting to want to get them to be perfect. Um, All right, maybe I should stop there. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. Do want to botch the uh, the face after all that? Um, all right, well, I think that's about it for tonight. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you to Neil for uh, for leaving some some good comments. Uh, Neil, if you do go back and watch this, this will be kind of like your um, very personalized, like uh, Marvel movie after the credits sequence. If I could, uh, if you permit me to be so vulgar. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, um, thanks for hanging out, and uh, happy drawing, everyone.